Hi, it's Stephen Hughes, your hardship real estate pro. Today, I am joined by Jordan Smith over at Equity Real Estate. If you see Jordan online, you might see that he sometimes calls himself Trailer Swift. One of the things that Jordan and I have in common is we are two of a very, very, very small group of real estate agents that actually focus and work on mobile homes without land. And Jordan and I end up talking fairly often about mobile home sales in Utah on the market. And recently we did some research off of utahrealestate.com. That's our local multiple listing service, MLS. And we just felt like talking about it. So you're just going to basically see two dudes that end up dealing with trailers, talking about what trailers are like to sell, what the current market is like here. And really it's, it's going to be unscripted. This, this all right here is probably the most scripted part of the whole video. So Jordan, I'm going to go ahead and pull up this Excel sheet and start okay. sharing. And I figure it'd be great if you started to talk a little bit about what you th are seeing and what you think about it. Let me just make sure this is actually sharing. Um, so it looks like it's up now. Very good, very good. One of the things that looking at this that surprised me in chat with Stephen was just this percent change on days on market. You saw days on markets up, higher interest rates for sure. In the mobiles, average days on market has always been a little bit higher. With real homes, this year it hovered around like 30, 35. But for mobiles, you're about double that. So you're about 60 days on market. So a lot of the potential clients we chat with, they're always a little bit surprised when they're trying to for sell by owner of mobile. And it would be interesting to look at the stats for, for sell by owner with mobiles and compare that to listed on MLS. I don't know if they even keep data on that. I find that really interesting though. 46% change though in days on market. And with real houses, it went from in, in the peak in the COVID area where you had something that was barely habitable. You could list it, still sell something like that in 10, 15, 15 days it was under contracts. It's just changed a whole lot. And I think it's funny we still have a lot of people in a lot of these mobile home communities, manufacturing home communities, parks, however you want to call it, that still think these homes will sell in a week. Or they'll see like these numbers and be like, oh, well, my home will sell in 60 days. But I don't know what you see, but I'll tell you, unless it's a three bed, two bath, double wide, if it's a single wide, it's going to take longer than 60 days to sell for the most. No, I would agree with you. I agree with you 100%. I have two mobiles in a 55 plus in Ogden the big Horn mobile home community. And we're priced right around 28, 28.5. I want to bum that one hasn't got much action. And these are, you know, decent trailers. They have central air, fairly large. It's usually like two bed, one bath, two bed, two bath, I think is what they are. The one finally got an offer. We listed it. We started at 39, almost 40, and we had to come down to about 35. And then we got a cash offer for 31. We're closing next week. But well over this days on market, we're talking about something that is as affordable as it gets. I mean, I probably count on my hands and toes here how many mobiles in Weaver, Davis, and Salt Lake are priced in with some 35 range. There's maybe three or four right now. Not many. I mean, when I first got into this, your single wides were in the 30,000s. But then COVID right. and it inflated the prices like crazy on mobile homes without land. And it was because people, like you were saying, they couldn't get into, a, a, you know, I hate just saying real house because this is someone's real home if they buy a mobile home. Yeah, I guess you could say a traditional home. Yeah. Yeah. However you want to say it, like, you know, we're not trying to offend anybody. I mean, there's all kinds of verbiage we can use, but it forced a lot of people that normally wouldn't look at mobile homes to start buying them. And it really inflated the prices. I mean, gosh, I've even sold a mobile home for like $160,000 and sold it for cash. Right. And that's with a $995 a month lot rent. And that doesn't include the utilities or any other fees like garbage and water, which is, again, crazy. And you still have to mow your grass and shovel snow. But um, I mean, I, I guess one of the things I was going to ask you is for real estate agents, we're talking about mobile homes without land. And I, I said in our introduction, and maybe this is getting us off topic, but I think it can help shed some light on where we're coming from. Why do you do trailers, Jordan? I mean, I could talk about why I do them and people see my YouTube channel. They have a bunch of videos about mobiles, but why do you do when most realtors don't? Personally, like for me, it, it started with just a few people reaching out and asking, 
hey, can you do this? Because in real estate, a lot of real estate agents, when they're approached, they say, oh, that's beneath me. <laughs> Growing up at a very large family, I have five brothers, family of eight, and we've always been very hardworking and we haven't turned away opportunities. And these are people too, and some of the hardest working people who are just trying to get by. And for me, it was always kind of like, wait a sec, you're not going to help somebody who's coming to you to, to basically have somebody in their corner. And so that's what drove me into the trailer space and approached, got approached and it's overwhelming. The first trailer that you, you sell, you can probably recall your first trailer you sold and we're meeting police over there to make sure the trailer isn't stolen and we're climbing under at the bottoms and getting numbers off of axles and we're looking for data compliance behind kitchen sinks. So the mobile space has a lot of nuance in it. And I think some of that is what scares agents and they look at it and they're like, well, $30,000, I'm not going to, I'm not going to help these people because that's not going to pay enough. I found though that these people need help or so sometimes then people in traditional houses, because there's such a knowledge gap in the financing, there's such a knowledge gap in the understanding of what it takes. And I love problem solving. And these were like puzzles for putting together all the pieces. When somebody else would be like, hey, I can do this. I came out and basically branded myself and said, hey, look, I'm Trailer Swift. And it was catchy and people would laugh about it. And with the popularity of Taylor Swift is probably even a little bit more prevalent, but I would say that's why I got into it is these are some of the most humble, terrific, awesome, hardworking people, and they deserve to be treated fairly. They deserve to have somebody who's in their corner and is not just going to do whatever and give them poor representation. And something interesting too, is our real estate insurance doesn't always cover the errors and omissions on these. Sometimes you have to even seek some additional insurance coverage. So. We're actually taking a lot of liability on ourselves to help people like this. And I think a lot of agents look at it and they're like, well, it's just not worth it. I found it's very worth it. I've really enjoyed doing it. Stephen and I have learned to do it at a really high level. I would consider him the foremost specialist on mobile homes. Anytime I run into anything, I'm like, I'm going to call him. He entrenched himself in the space. And I would arguably say he's one of the top mobile home specialists in the entire country if not the top, just his experience selling these, it's unprecedented. I appreciate the compliment. I don't know if I'm the top in the country. I, I will go ahead and do the humble brag and say anything at the top of Utah, but it's, but it's funny. One of the things you talked about, I mean, I, I think we look back at those numbers, like the days it takes to sell, but the average price that people are buying them for is about 85,000. You know, I can pull that sheet back yeah. up, but in, you think about it, no home costs that much anymore. It just doesn't exist. And one of the things I talk about is there's a lot of people who are really concerned about being first time home buyers, like home ownership in general. People feel like they're stuck renting forever and ever. And I will feel the mobile home could be a pathway to home ownership. I think people need to start thinking there's some steps in between getting that $700,000 home that's a new build that's on the bench. A lot of people want to skip to that or they think, oh, my first home has to be this $320,000 place that's a dump. I think you could start off with a mobile home, then you know, upgrade to a town home, and basically you sell and you roll that money in equity into another home. Now, is a mobile home going to gain a bunch of equity, like two hundred dollars or $300,000? No. But do you yeah. get some of your money back as opposed to just renting 100%? Yeah, absolutely. So th that's why I'm still a proponent of them. And I think in the other part of my business, and you mentioned Bighorn, the 55 plus parts. They, the, these trailers can be a good stepping stone between seniors when they've downsized and sold their traditional home, which Jordan and I have a different video about that coming up and getting them into one of these 55 plus mobile home parts. And that's before they have to move into assisted living or anything because maybe they're still independent and it's definitely more affordable than independent living. So there's a space for seniors big time in these mobile home parks. I don't know if you've done a ton of 55 plus mobile home parks. I know you have these two listings, but. Yeah. What you're, what you're saying here, those happen being to a T and that one that's going under contract, he is a former uh, service member and he's about 70, 75 years old or so. 
And that's exactly what he's doing. He's moving into this community over there at Bighorn and he's paying cash for it because what's an interesting stat on these is there hasn't been really much depreciation on the mobile market. And probably because a lot of people are starting to say, hey, look, I'm throwing away 15 to 1900 in rent. I can get into a park with seven, $800 lot rent plus my mortgage payment on one of these and I'm 1600 or so, give or take. And that's still better than 1900 in rent, but I actually have an asset to show for it. And it does make a compelling case that you're not really going to lose money on this mobile. I think the appreciation and depreciation was like 2%. So there hasn't been just this fallout. Everybody says, oh, rates go up and everything was going to shed value or going to be those parts. The data doesn't seem to indicate that, at least from what we pulled. And yeah, to your point, it is a good space or a good option for a senior. Let's say they sell their home and then they go to, they maybe can't make the assisted living work or don't qualify with Medicare, Medicaid, but they can make a jump over to some of these communities. And I would say the social aspect of the communities, especially over there, Bighorn. Every time I drive in there, man, people are gathered around out on their patios, playing cards, inviting one another over for cookouts and stuff. So I don't know if that is to every park, but at least over there at Bighorn, there's probably only 50, 60 mobiles over there, but the community is pretty tight knit. And I've seen that from helping my, my own uncle get into there when he had a little bit of a difficult situation with the divorce. We got him into there and he actually raves about the park, has a lot of friends over there. And these communities are very, very tight. It's something that towards that part of life, you can stay in it until your health changes. I guess on the For other sure. side of it is what about like people who are young, but I tell a lot of people and I, I don't know your advice would be, okay, let's say you know, they're going to buy it. And I say, stay in it for two, three years, then try to sell it and get into something bigger, you know, something that it has the land included because it will help you create more wealth long-term. And I think that's what we see sometimes the people who are selling these is sometimes we have people yeah. selling the mobiles. And this is where I think realtors make a mistake is helping that person sell the mobile to then get them into a traditional house is a big deal. And it's a huge process. And sometimes they need to sell of this to get the down payment or other moving costs for this new home. So again, it, it has implanted itself in Utah as part of the, I would say, organic way to get into home ownership. It is on your way up and it's on your way down. I wish more realtors did it. There are a lot of realtors who will do one or two here and there, but I'm sure Jordan and I have a lot of stories where sometimes those agents are, you know, not as well informed, unfortunately. And then there ends up being yeah. some common issues that come up. No, 100%. And I would agree with you on that. It was a tough little learning curve when I jumped into it because I thought it was, this is exactly like a house. And you really got to go through the park and you got to have allies with uh, the community members and the managers of, of these communities. If you get off on a wrong foot with a community, it can really make things difficult. And I learned that the hard way early on, the first one I ever sold. It was a bit of a disaster, I guess you could say, because I didn't go in and talk or we put up a sign and we thought, okay, they've given us permission. And there was just a little bit of friction. And as I've matured in, in the mobile home space, I've definitely tried to form allies and advocates with these, with these parks. And I think a lot of these for sell by owners too, they can run into issues where they don't understand some of the rules and the regulations and the importance of having a park manager on your side. To your other point, though, Stephen, about a lot of agents not doing things, I think we could pull up any of our listings. Those listings that I have over a big horn, the 35,000 and 28,000, they have over 50,000 unique views on Utah real estate. And they're lead magnets. They generate a lot of calls. They generate a lot of action. Does it always translate? No, but sometimes it does. On one of your mobiles, you ended up referring somebody over to me to go out and show it to him. You weren't available and it translated into him purchasing a real house. So there are some real sleepers of people who they may not even know what their credit score is, what their income qualifies them for. And a lot of times they find out, hey, I can actually get into a home or what you said earlier too. I've helped plenty of people. There's a park out there on Midland and I helped the gentleman selling it to 
basically get into a real home too. He sold his mobile and then he had enough. He moved in with his parents and then he had enough to purchase within a year. That equity it saved him basically because now all of a sudden he could establish himself on ownership. And what I always tell everybody, one way or another, you're paying a mortgage. You're either paying your landlords or your own. So even with a mobile, you are paying a mortgage and it's for savings. A lot of people just throw their money away at rent and there's nothing back. At least this is an asset and maybe not the most readily appreciating asset, but something that you can flip into something else later. So I think maybe the next steps in real estate is affordability becomes an issue is, hey, let's get you into a bubble, like Stephen was saying, let's stay there a couple of years, two, three years, and then let's try and get you into a condo, a townhome, a single family home. And the mobile may well be the next first time home buyer or single family residence for a lot of folks, especially as we see housing continue to go up in cost and they can't build them fast enough. I, you look at Utah, we have about 65, 70,000 people coming into the state and the housing is just not falling soon, especially as affordability goes up. A lot of builders said, hey, we got to level off on it. And we're, well, we're looking at maybe four rate coming in 2024. We're going to be right back where we were, multiple offers, bidding wars. And we even saw that in the mobile space. It was wild. Yep. Good for sellers, but it is, it's, it's stressful for buyers. If we get back into that environment, we've talked about a couple of times, people who are trying to sell these mobiles as for sell by owner. Because what's funny, and I don't know if I've told you this stats, but a National Association of Realtors actually did this stat. Half of the for sell by owner homes in the United States are actually mobile homes. Like right, I think, oh, wow. which is crazy, right? And real, real estate agents are taught all the time, go after FISBOs, FISBOs. But of course, everyone says leave mobile homes a lot. I actually feel like I bring more value to a for sale by owner mobile home seller because, you know, the community parks and rules. But reality is most of these homes are now like in the 80s and 90s or 70,000s. Right. People don't have just $70,000 in cash laying around. Banks and credit unions do not do loans on these. I mean, if you've looked at my YouTube channel, you've seen some of those other videos. Navigating the mortgage companies, and there's only really three of them in the United States. Unless you, some, I mean, if you're out of Utah, it could be different. You might have a local bank or credit union that does it, but most likely they're doing homes that are only post-1976. A lot of the homes we have are pre-1976 in these mobile home parks. And that comes to HUD laws, the federal government, housing, urban development. So lenders end up doing all kinds of crazy stuff, mortgage and banks and whatnot. But the reality is people don't just don't have $70,000 rolling around, so they need a mortgage. And I will say it is a nightmare of dealing with the, these mobile home financing companies. You really do need someone. I mean, I, I've been doing it. You know how many of these I've sold? And I'm in the middle of a nightmare with a certain company that always gets confused with a real estate company because of that, the, the 21 number. There, you can figure it out. And it's, that's the biggest reason to hire me is the financing is absolute hell. I can't think of anything harder I've done. Honestly, I, I think a short sale might not even be as hard. I may, maybe I'm crazy for that, but I, I don't know. They can be really difficult. No, that's a, that's a really good point, Stephen. And it brings us full circle too of why agents should probably understand mobiles. I feel like I'm a more fine tuned agent as far as a regular real estate transaction, a home with land, because the mobile is so much more involved. I mean, we've even gotten into doing settlement statements and bills of sale and documentation with the county and talking with assessors. So we've become very, very well-versed and even fine-tuned machines, I guess you could say, as, as these transactions go. And I can only imagine Stephen, who's just, he's just so entrenched in this, selling hundreds of these puppies every year. So the level of expertise and skill to do this, it's no wonder that the for sale by owners have such difficulty because during the COVID period, you could FISBO, you could for sell by owner, and you could maybe be okay if you got on and Googled and looked up the forms and you might be okay. I can't even imagine trying to do a mobile home sell as a for sell by owner. It's reckless. It's crazy. And you can get the best in the business chatting with Trailer Swift and Stephen Hughes here. We, just, we definitely know our mobiles and hopefully you can feel that coming through on this video and this chat we're having.
Yeah. And then we're just going to go ahead and end there. Just a lot of different facts we talked about today. If you have any thoughts or questions, of course, comment, like below. If you are looking to sell or buy a mobile home, uh, we do have a link in the description box about selling your mobile home. You can click that. It'll take you to a separate website. If you have any questions about buying in general, check out our buyer ultimate guide playlist, as well as our ultimate guide to mobile home playlist here on the YouTube channel. Of course, you can feel free to give me a call or text, or email at any time. That information is below. But Jordan, how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, so we'll drop a link to my website as well. I can share that with you. You can Google local Utah Realty and it should pop up on Google and website as well. So really do appreciate you having me on and it's great chatting with you. It's always a pleasure. I always learn something. Chat with Steven. He's awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye.